Hello and welcome to the new Ray Media Show. I'm your host, Alexander Wolf, and today we're going to talk about blogging with a B and building a business in the health industry with Joy McCarthy. We will discuss the ins and outs of health products and there is some great insight at the end of this episode, so I hope you stay all the way through. Enjoy. <laughs> In today's episode, we have the pleasure of hosting Joy McCarthy, a renowned holistic nutritionist and founder of joyoushealth.com. Joy is the author of three best-selling cookbooks and co-founder of Hello Joyous, an organic plus plant-based beauty brand. She hosts the Joyous Health podcast, where she interviews natural health experts worldwide. Joy has been featured on Marilyn Dennis, The Social, CNN, and CBC, and is a trusted nutrition expert on CityLine. Join us as we dive into her expertise and passion for holistic wellness. Hey, Joy, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Very good. Thank you for taking the time to chat. I saw, I, I don't know where, where it was from, but uh, you started your journey, like your health journey in your 20s. Yes. What motivated you to get into healthy things? Yeah, so I had a lot of health issues and I had, you know, gone down the conventional route and Western medicine for many years. Um, I tried different medications and I was really just getting more sick, losing more hair, feeling more anxious. I had digestive problems, hormonal imbalance. So finally I came to a fork in the road and I was like, enough is enough. You know, I have to figure out a different path because I can't continue feeling like this. It's just terrible. So that's kind of what, um, that was like the launch pad sort of, I guess I sort of hit rock bottom in a way and realized that I needed to try something different because what I was doing wasn't working. And, you know, it wasn't immediate, but my health transformed. You know, it took me about six months to see, you know, my hair start to grow back. But I, but even in the first few weeks of making some of the changes I did, I just started to feel really different. And uh, when I went back to my doctor months later to have blood work done, he was just like floored. He's like, how did you do this? You know, I've been working with you for years trying to help you. Um, what did you do? So I'm really proud of my journey. And I, that really is what inspired me to, you know, leave the corporate nine to five and go back to school to study more um, so that I could help more people. And then after you became a holistic nutritionist, you started your blog, right? Like why a blog? When was yeah. this and why a blog? Yeah, okay, so this was a while, it was like how long? Okay, so 2009, 2008, 2009 was when I started blogging and blogs were everything, right? Everyone was blogging. Um, so it was just the thing to do. You know, if I was just starting my business now, um, I think having a website and a blog would be part of it. But you know, now with social media, the social media landscape and all the different tools that we can use, I would have definitely been tapping into Instagram. I mean, I'm trying to think back then. No, Instagram wasn't even a thing. I don't think so I got on Instagram so. until, I don't know what year it launched, but I didn't get on Instagram till 2013. So I had been running my business, utilizing my blog and Twitter. <laughs> Those were like the main ways I was like <laughs> marketing myself. Obviously you wanted to get clients. Did you yeah. see it that way? Like I'll start a blog to get known or did you yes. start blogging for, you already answered, but did you start blogging for just, I guess for fun? I don't know. Well, it was both. I mean, I love, I love writing. Um, writing for me is like a form of therapy and it's, just a way to really my mission from day one has been like to help people to provide people with education to empower them um, to take charge of their own health so it was really twofold my mission was education and also with my marketing background i knew that i needed to create awareness for joyous health and for my brand and also have better google rankings so when people are searching for a holistic nutritionist so i knew that having fresh content and still to this day, like it's important if you have a blog, a website that you're updating the content, um, because if your blog's been stagnant, you know, for six months, why is Google gonna send people in organic search to your website to look for, I don't know, a gut healing smoothie if there's fresh, if there's more fresh content out there. So always, so it was, to answer your question, it was kind of like twofold. How long did it take for your blog to, 
get momentum? And when did you notice that it was, you know, helping that compared to maybe a couple of years before the blog boom happened, it was more traditional marketing, right? Yeah, so, for sure. No one has money for traditional marketing, right? Unless you're like Nike or Starbucks. Coca-Cola, yeah. Yeah, right? So for me, I would say, you know, it's funny, like, with, with writing and putting all this information out there, sometimes you're like, is anyone actually getting this? Is anyone reading this? So then it was, I was starting to get feedback. I get like a comment on a blog post from like someone in Germany and be like, Joy, I've been like reading everything you've been sharing and trying your recipes for a month and a half now and it's making such a difference. So that's how I kind of knew was were people actually like commenting and sharing. And it wasn't like I was like inundated with comments in the beginning, but that's how I knew I was kind of getting somewhere. Cause it's like, oh wow, someone from like across the pond, I'm in Canada, someone from Europe is reading joyoushealth.com and benefiting from this information. So that's how I feel it like kind of started was yeah, just like putting the information out there, just sharing, continuing to share, even though sometimes I felt like I was just kind of talking to nobody. Did the popularity of the blog then motivate you to have more opportunities and then motivate you to write your own cookbook? Yeah, so my cookbook, so I have three cookbooks now and I got my cookbook deals because I was active on social media and because I had started to establish this following with my blog. So I obviously had subscribers to my blog and whatnot. So then a publisher approached me and I was actually days away from launching my first ebook. And a publisher approached me and said, hey, have you have you ever thought of writing a book? And I said, well, actually, I'm gonna be launching my ebook in a few days. It's all written, it's designed, it's beautiful. And she was like, oh, can you send it to us to, so we could see it? Uh, and so I was like, yeah, sure. So I sent it over and they were like, wow, we love this. We want you to turn this into an actual like printed, published book. So that's how that happened. That would have probably never happened had I not already been putting all that content out there because the publisher saw me as a great, you know, marketing opportunity. I had already established uh, myself as a credible expert and I had already started to establish an audience. So for them, you know, it's, it's, it's great. And you see that Easier, with a lot yeah. of, yeah, you see that with a lot of authors now. Um, a lot of authors, and this over the last 10 years, it's just exploded. A lot of authors are people who are YouTubers, who have blogs or a strong social media presence. For better or worse, you may look at that and be like, yeah, but are you actually getting experts? But, you know, it's about, you know, I think from a, from a publisher perspective, they want to see that you are invested in growing your brand too. Yeah, that leads me exactly to my next question is that you see all these influencers starting even before it was like landing a deal, right? But now you see right. like Mr. Beast, Jake Paul, all these huge influencers starting on their own products like Mr. Beast, a burger chain, right. chocolate right. bars. The, Jake Paul was the prime energy drink. So now it's no longer, you know, I'll use my platform to sell your stuff. We'll start our own business. We'll manufacture. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think we're it, we're seeing it. It's just just getting there. We're going to see a lot of even micro influencers starting their own products and no mm -hmm. longer just selling, you know, ads or just because yeah. attention is the biggest value at the moment. The biggest mm -hmm. asset I think is attention. Do you feel like that's what happened to you maybe at a smaller scale than Mr. Reese? Like you gained the attention and you now, because now with your, your husband, you have your own products. So for me, whenever we're going to launch something new, whether it's, you know, a digital product or a tangible product, something someone can buy, it's always, is this something that I am deeply passionate about? And is this something that my community is asking for? And if those two marry together, then we make it happen. And that's kind of what happened with our Hello Joyous brand. So as you probably know, we have a line of organic skincare, hair care, body care, and organic wellness teas. And so, you know, as a holistic nutritionist, it's not just about what you eat, you know, everything that I've been singing the praises for and promoting is about a holistic lifestyle you know, not just what you eat, what are the products you use on your body and, you know, living a toxin-free lifestyle. So I was making my own products and I kept having people ask me like, what do you recommend? And I was like, well, I'm making my own stuff. I'm sharing these recipes. I think this is a really great business idea to be able to help more people. 
So that's kind of how, and, and of course, having that attention and having that community that we've been building over the last decade was so key. You know, if I had just started with my Hello Joy products, Hello Joyous products first, mm. before actually growing my community, it's definitely a lot harder to do, I think. But of course, there's tons of brands. There's millions of brands who just like their their brand is their product and then they grow. Whereas we kind of did it the other way, grew our brand and then branched out into other things. And now we're building a new brand, which is Hello Joyous. And that's our brand of our organic skincare, body care and all that. Yeah, I mean, if you're a business operator with, with some sort of skill like, and you don't want to be a famous person and then start it, Obviously, you can have success, right? There's many roads to do gaining success in business, but having that personal brand gives you so many more opportunities because like you said, you had this product. Now you can choose this product and you just move the attention which way you want, not just one company has the, pro uh, the attention. How do, you, how do you see marketing? Do you see it as a way to gain attention for your products or do you see it separate almost from the companies and you almost like a TV show, you're making content for people. And then if you're interested in our products, you know, our links in our bio, maybe they'll help you. Do you separate the two or are they mixed? Because for me personally, I have a couple brands, I have a marketing agency, but I've always seen the marketing agency just because I want to create content. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, I have different brands, different companies or products that you can buy. If you're interested and that can help you go for it, but like I see the marketing and the product and the content as itself, as a, just like a show to entertain yeah. or to give information. I separate them in my mind. Oh, How do you see it? Yeah, I haven't really ever thought of it that way. I've always like, um, because my background is business and marketing, you know, that's what I went to school for before I became a nutritionist. So I see marketing as just one piece of the puzzle of being an entrepreneur and having a business. Marketing, sales and marketing is incredibly important. That being said, um, the way that we market, the way that I market is by creating content. Some of it's entertaining, maybe some of it is um, not so entertaining and purely just educational, but it's something that I really like to do and it's something that is so important to be able to grow a brand. So I see, like I wear so many different hats as an entrepreneur, one of those hats is marketing and within that marketing umbrella is creating content. And that's something that I have to do to continue to grow the brand. But it's also something that I want to do because it's always kind of wrapped up with education. It's not just like because of the kind of content I'm, I'm creating, it's not just like fun and although it's fun for me, it's not just about entertainment. It's really about empowering and educating and inspiring people. Um, so that's what I hope people are, are getting from it. It's a daily job. It never goes away. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think it's a chore if for me, if I think of it as, a, you know, I have to do this to sell and it has to it starts contaminating what I make because yes. it's, it's more towards sales. When I know that if I create something, you know, original, that's educational, entertaining, maybe the attention comes to me and it will trickle down into whatever I am selling or, you know, offering. Well, I think it really does because as long as you're authentic and you're like building that audience, then you become a trusted voice. So whatever it is that you are selling, it's, I'm assuming related to the content you're sharing, then I feel like it's not, it's natural. Like when I'm educating people about having healthy skin from within and having good gut health, then it's a natural transition for people to wonder, well, what does Joy use exactly. to like wash her face? And what serums does she use? Mm. So it's not always like, like the marketing, as you know, it's not always a hard sell. It's not always like, hey, go check out my joyous, my uh, Hello Joyous serum. It's not about that. It's more like, here are things you can do for healthy glowing skin. And then sometimes it's a little more of a hard sell. It just, it just depends. Like the content is kind of always a mix, but I think you have a good balance with it that you don't want to, you know, always have it, oh, just always be authentic. And and I think you will win over your audience and people will trust in you. Are you guys only in Canada or have you tried getting into the United States market? Yeah, we're in the US as well. So um, we ship direct to consumer. We are not in any stores as yet in the US, but that's something we've been working on for the last two months, fingers crossed, it's a big job trying to get into different retailers. But yeah, 
we ship Canada and the U.S. and then we also, our products, uh, people buy internationally as well. We have customers in Australia. Now it's not cheap um, yeah. to ship <laughs> to ship overseas, but, but people, uh, we do have flat rate shipping. So people do, we do have customers all over the world, which is awesome. And that's a little bit of a, an insight that people are willing to pay for that whatever huge amount yes. of shipping 100%. because they, they like you and what you're saying so much, right? You know what I noticed, which is interesting actually, um, was TikTok. When I got on TikTok and I actually started posting regularly, that was about nine months ago. I was like, I'm going to try this and see what happens. That's when I noticed an increase in orders from other places other than mm. Canada and the US. So when I actually started utilizing TikTok, because I was kind of like, you know, willy nilly with it because there's a million other things to do. But yeah, I thought that was really interesting. I, I find with TikTok, it's, you know, so much more of an international audience, whereas I feel like Instagram, I have more of like a North American audience. Well, and what kind of, I'm curious, what kind of content did you feel like created the most uh, attraction or attention in transactions? Sometimes it's hard to say because I don't know exactly, like, you know how you, get, you can see like we use Shopify as like mm -hmm. our e-commerce platform. You can see where people are coming from, but you can't necessarily see like what post. So I do notice though, if I specifically, if I go on TikTok and I talk really specific about a product, then I will see a lift. But you have to be careful with that because you don't want to just have like every piece of social content being like, here's what I use to wash my face. Here's the mask that I use. Here's my nighttime routine. You know, I'm very, I guess you could say strategic about that in that the content I curate on social media, I don't want it to always be a hard sell. It has to be like a mix of the two, educating people on products, also like educating people on new holistic nutrition and holistic beauty. But I think sometimes people are afraid of the hard sell. They feel like, icky about it and they feel like it's not being authentic but you uh, if you're running a for-profit business like put your big girl pants on big boy pants on <laughs> and like tell people don't be shy to tell people what you what you have to offer because people will be interested some people are going to be like oh she's just trying to sell something so what you're not going to sell to them anyways so there's lots of people who can benefit from what it is that you have to share and what you are selling Right, yeah. At the end of the day, you have to ask for the sale, right? Right, yeah, exactly. I want to go back to the US Canada thing because for me, I've been looking a lot into the, the American market. Do you feel like the Canadian market, when you just had Canada, was big enough to sustain uh, in your niche, like to sustain a, a building and a growing business? Or did it have to go into the US? Uh, you know what? I never really thought of it that way because I just always assumed that people can access my information no matter where they live. So in growing Hello Joyous and our product space business, it was always, we're gonna be in Canada and the US. I mean, because the US is so much bigger than Canada. We're what, 35, what are we in Canada? 35 million people? <laughs> Yeah, and we're in the U.S., right? And the U.S. is what, 350 million maybe now? I don't yeah, even know. Yeah. So we are so small, but it was never like, oh, we're not going to make it if we're only in Canada. It's like, well, let's just be in both places. So we we never, um, as I was growing Joy's Health, I never uh, was thinking I just wanted to be in Canada only. I always like wanted to expand um, as, as, you know, expand everywhere. Would you have some advice on somebody like is hesitating to get into the American market? Is it hard? Is it like, what are the problems with it? Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, I guess it depends what it is that you're marketing and what are you selling? If you have a natural health product, yeah, there are a lot of, there's a lot of red tape and paperwork you have to get through, but I think it's actually harder for American natural health products to get into Canada because Health Canada is more difficult than it is to get into the U.S. So um, because we, we didn't initially start out trying to get into retail stores, we were direct to consumer for many years. I never felt like there were any roadblocks or it was hard. The only, you know, once in a while our organic teas get like caught up at customs at the border going into the US because they're like, what is this stuff? Yeah. Um, but I feel like it hasn't been, I mean, we're only trying to get into the US market into retailers now. So maybe if you ask me in six months, um, I'll have a different response, but right now we're just, you know, just plugging away. I have this question that I kind of ask everybody. 
This is very interesting for me. What is a brand or maybe like a commercial that really stuck with you from childhood and still in your mind, still has a, not paid rent in your mind and just stays there that you always remember? Yeah. Oh, there's so many. Um, you know what? It's probably all like children's cereals because my yeah. parents didn't let me eat sugary <laughs> cereals. So I always remember like the Frosted Flakes guy. That was like a tiger, wasn't it? Frosted Flakes. Tony the Tiger? Right? Yeah. Is Yeah. Was he Frosted Flakes? I think so, yeah. Yeah, probably just yeah. like my brain wanting sugar. Give me refined yeah. sugar and, you know, growing, but growing up in such a healthy household, the only time we got to eat sugar, sugary cereal was when my parents took us camping, my brother and I, and then you'd buy, do you, I don't know if they make those anymore, those little tiny box cereals, uh, yeah. do you remember those? And you would, they would I like- I have seen those forever, yeah. Yeah, they had like a perforated opening and you would crack it open, then you'd pour your milk exactly. into the box. That was the best. <laughs> yeah. So I remember those, but I know, I yeah, I think it's just because I really wanted, but I can't, you know, growing up over the years, I always remember, like there's always like the Super Bowl commercials that really mm. stand out, the ones that like, you know, it's not the funny ones that get to me. It's always the ones that like, you know, touch me in the heart. I'm like, oh. <laughs> if you were to start your business right now from zero, you know everything that you've done, how would you do it? What would you do and what you wouldn't do now? Yeah, oh, that's a big question. I think I would do a lot of the things the same because I feel like I made lots of mistakes on the way. And had I not made those mistakes, I wouldn't know how to do what I do now. So I think, you know, actually, let me just backtrack a bit. I think a big part of growing and success is not getting in your own way. And I think that I have managed to somehow not get in my own way. I'm not the type of person to like mull over, like, you know, write a social post 25 times until it's perfect. Um, so my advice to people who are you know, feeling that block and, and feeling like, oh, like, I don't know if I should share this, like overanalyzing sort of perfectionism. I would say like, don't be that person. Stop overanalyzing everything you share. No one expects you to be a perfectionist um, because when you try to do that, it comes across so calculated and you can always sense that on social media. I think when something is like too perfect, and too well edited and too professional. Um, so, you know, that's one thing I, I very early on, I was just like, I just have to get this information out there. If I have a spelling mistake, not that I'm saying I wanna ever have a spelling mistake <laughs> now, but that, that's kind of my advice to like, just don't get, in, don't get in your own way of trying to be too perfect. And I didn't do that. I definitely didn't do that. But I, I feel like, because I used to teach, um, I used to be on the faculty at the Institute of Holistic Nutrition. So I met a lot of nutrition students and time and time again, students who were about to start their own business and become entrepreneurs were like a deer in the headlights, really, really scared, like scared of success, scared of sharing, scared of this and that. And I was like, I was always like, ah, just do it, just do it. You won't know until you try and then it gets easier each time. So I think, you know, it's just like getting out of your own way is really important. I think you're totally right. I think when I was younger, like, because I've always been an entrepreneur, like spirited, like I never wanted to work yeah. for anybody. I, maybe when I was younger, I was harder to work with. So I guess it, I got <laughs> right that way. And I always thought, and I saw people being very successful in my young, naive mind. I'm like, well, they're not a lot smarter than me. Like, they, 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 what do they have that I don't? And what I've learned now is like a lot of people, what they, they become successful are people that just end up doing it and pushing yeah. every day, every exactly. single day they get up and do it. It's not rocket yeah. science. It's just literally slowly making another call, talking to somebody new, just completely and don't stop. Yeah, and, and having a lot of rejection too, facing yeah. a lot of rejection and it's not easy and it's not like every day is like sunshine and rainbows. There's lots of hard days. It's not easy when you're an entrepreneur. I feel like, you know, when I, cause I compare to my corporate nine to five, when I had like this steady income, like paycheck every two weeks, great. I can go shopping now. You know, when I was in my twenties, my paycheck was like, great, pay my rent. Now I go shopping. Now, you know, it's not, it's not if when you're, especially cause we're like launching this new business with Hello Joyous cause we rebranded everything. Like it's not, it's not a straight line. So, you know, just continuing to push through um, 
it, I, it, it takes work. Like, you know, you hear about these like four hour work weeks and all this stuff. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, not yeah. happening yet. I say no comment to that, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, man, like, <laughs> I guess if, <laughs> if somebody's allowing you to pay your check, well, they'll let you do that, but right. not, for, not exactly. for us. But you gotta make sure you have time for yourself too, because then otherwise you just like burn out. So, you know, it's all about, you know, yes, work really hard, but also make sure that you have time to rest and recuperate. It's like no one, no one gets between me and my sleep. Like sleep hmm. is important to me. I, you know, that's how I stay joyous and healthy and able to do everything I do is by having, you know, different, having my priorities right, taking care of myself. For the last question here, and that's a little bit more for me. When I was a little younger and still in my business, I always kind of sought out, because I was always a solo entrepreneur, no partnerships, no nothing, no partners. I always kind of sought out somebody to do it with me, right? Like mm -hmm. getting a partner. And because yeah. it was just all alone in my head, like, we'll do right. this. But I felt very isolated. So I always kind of sought partnerships that never turned out great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and it's then I, find. I think it's more, you make, when you're looking for a partner, if it's not literally because that you need them, I think it's more emotional, right? Yeah. And I see that, well, now you have a partner. Is it easier, you think, being able to share that? Because I'm also married and I think my wife is part of the business in, in a sense that because I talk to her, but she's not part of the business mm. and she doesn't deal well with uh, changes. And I'm more okay. like, well, let's try this and bet everything towards mm -hmm. this. And I'm very like entrepreneurial and it's hard for her, but having somebody part of business that is maybe in the same mindset, does that help? Have you seen a big difference in your personal life because of it? Yeah, so Walker and I, my husband, and also my business partner, as you know, we have been working together for 10 years. So Joyous Health was just me for the first five years. And I was not looking for a business partner, but it just so happened that he had a lot of expertise that I did not have. So he kind of just started helping me on the side. And then we realized like how much value he could bring. And he, similar to yourself, was very much always an entrepreneur his whole entire life. So it seemed like a natural transition that we would work together. And it was really scary when we first started because we're like, what if we hate this? Like yeah. what, we're not gonna get a divorce. So it was always like, not a divorce, we stop working together if we right. don't enjoy it. But it definitely, when that happened, that's when the business really grew because I could focus on what I'm good at and he could focus on what he is good at and he really, really helped to grow the business. I cannot imagine not having him. Like, I feel like where I am now, like would not be the same, you know, because you get to a point where you can't do everything yourself. You have to grow. But the great thing about having a partner like that, who you can really rely on and trust is that, you know, they're fully invested in the business. They want it to be as successful as you do. And that can be a challenge. Not every husband and wife can work together. Like most of our friends, you know, think we're kind of crazy <laughs> um, that we, but it works. It totally works. And if you like to spend every second with your partner, yeah. that's good. Oh, which, yeah. Which some people don't, but like... I, I definitely nothing, do. I definitely do with it too, so I don't <laughs> Anything interesting that's happening right now that we should kind of push attention towards on your, on your end? Yeah, I mean, so we've just relaunched in April. We just relaunched. We So our whole brand used to be under Joyous Health. We relaunched our brand under Hello Joyous. So everyone go check that out. Um, that's really the big thing that we're working on right now is growing awareness for our relaunch and our new brand. And really our mission is that we want our products to bring more joy to people's lives. You know, when you open a jar of body butter, we want you to feel joy. We want you to feel good knowing that you're not using any hormone disrupting chemicals on your body, that you're putting something on your skin that is nourishing. Cause you know, there's lots of products that can moisturize, but there's not a lot of products that can moisturize and nourish. So I feel like that's where our like niche is because we're actually like, you know, we've created things that actually feed and nourish the skin. Thank you for having me on because I just oh, really, you. you know, want more people to know about Hello Joyous and say hi to Hello Joyous. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time, Joy. I really, really enjoyed our chat. Yeah, me too. All right, have a good one. You too. Bye-bye.